I am the granddaddy. <laughs> well, actually, I was started as a technical uh, guy. We drove the gear truck in 1990. That was the first jazz festival. And I took over for Neil Kimmelman. He was the first uh, artistic director, producer in 1993. They were themed at the beginning, which turned into be a bit of a problem because if you, you pick the theme, then you had, you had to pick the artist to fit that theme. So we got rid of that in, I think, 05. But the first one was uh, vocals. So it was really a great festival. We had Renee Lee was one of the strong acts and funny enough Holly Cole opened for her and I think we paid Holly Cole probably two or three hundred bucks to open that gig. Not what she's making these days. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I started back in 04 uh, but it, you know I, I, I have to mention back in 2000 or 2001 I actually worked for Dave. I was his, uh, his publicity guy so you know at that time I was like man he's got a great job. I'd love to have that job and when he moved on I, I kind of got lucky and here I am. We used to mainly do main stage concerts and you know a little free show during the day. Uh, we created the uh, Old Market Square the opening weekend with the big beer garden to really give the festival a huge kickoff and adding stuff that wasn't necessarily pure jazz was probably the biggest thing that's kept the festival alive all these years. Jazz is still the real deal. It's a real thing. It's a legitimate thing. It's an art form uh, that needs to be cultivated and, and celebrated. Uh, but you know, I think Dave had a great vision early on. You have to diversify the uh, the programming mix for the festival uh, in order to you know really fully engage the communities. You need your blues in the mix. You need your pop in the mix. You need your your rock in the mix. And it's all part of what you know electrifies the festival and, and really gets the uh, the community interested. Yeah, without the volunteers, like any festival in this province, uh, it wouldn't be here today. Some of them have been there since day one. In fact, a lot of them have, and I still see some of them every now and then. We've got people involved with the festival who are taking their vacation time during the jazz festival to lend a hand, and and you can't help but be humbled and moved by that. I think because there was such a great jazz festival here, it's created other. You know, like the U of M jazz program, these different gigs around town for musicians and just the camaraderie they have and how everybody works together and shares and it's really given them a real venue to, to showcase their talents. I think of the festival as a chance to shine a light on uh, the, the, the great talent we've got here. I think it's important to keep in mind a lot of our history. You've got guys like Ron Paley who've been at it for, for a really long time. Owen Clark is still at it. Janice Finley's still out there. Now we've got the University of Manitoba who's bringing in all these, these young, fresh, new faces uh, and really electrifying uh, the, the scene and we're seeing a lot of momentum gained uh, through that. I didn't think it would make it as long as it did and kudos to Paul and the team still that kept it going. Uh, uh, that it's here for 25 years because in all honesty I didn't think it was going to last that long. I really want to see the exchange district start to hum a lot more and, and get that festival vibe going and really promote that sense of discovery that I think is really instrumental to what a festival is all about.